So if you remember from a previous video, we talked about what a z-score is and its importance. In particular, what a z-score is, is that it's a data transformation, which maps a distribution to a standardized normal curve by changing its mean to zero and changing its standard deviation to one. And what this allows us to do is meaningfully compare two or more continuous variables that have a different mean and different standard deviation. And if you remember from the video, we used the CTT package to transform scores to z-scores. So to review here, we're gonna use the score.transform function on our music perception scores variable and we're going to store it in an object called mptransform. In order to access the z-scores, we can access the new.scores attribute using the dollar sign notation. Here, we'll store it into an object called mpzscores. And now what mpzscores contains is transform z-scores of our music perception scores variable. Now what we can do is if we're interested in comparing this to a different continuous variable, we could do the same thing. As an example, let's transform our music aptitude scores to z-scores. And now what we can do is we can look at the distributions and make meaningful comparisons. So here, because the mean is zero, we can make inferences about its skewness. So for example, our music perception scores has a larger difference between its median than the music aptitude scores. We can take a look at the overall range and we can look at the distribution by thinking about quartiles, quantiles, or percentiles. If we use the psych package, we can use the describe function. We can get more information related to the central tendency and distribution of the data. Or if we're interested in comparing two different continuous scores stratified by the same categorical variable, we can use the describe by function and we can take a look at the differences in groups across both continuous variables. So transforming data to z-scores is very powerful for comparison purposes. Now another important thing that we can do with z-scores is that we can use either test scores or Likert data from surveys to create composite continuous variables. So if we take a look again at our data frame, we see that we have some survey data containing three items, item one, item two, and item three. Now, if we wanted to take a look at the overall responses to all of the items for the persons that responded, and then look at differences between grouping variables, one method that we can use is that we can sum all of their scores and then use the sum scores as an aggregate measure. And we're gonna be doing this with statistical tests later when we talk about regression and ANOVA. So why don't we do that? Note here again that here we have the data coerced as ordered factor vectors, but what we can do is we can change the labels to representative numbers. And we've done this before, where one represents strongly disagree, two represents disagree, three represents agree, and four represents strongly agree. So if you remember from a previous video, what we did is we took the data and then coerced it into a numeric variable using the as.numeric function. So let's do that again. Let's store each of them in distinct objects. We'll call it item one, numeric. We'll use the as numeric function, and then we'll pass in our item one data. And let's do this for item two and item three as well. And then we'll run the code. And now let's store these three numeric vectors into its own data frame. We'll call the data frame items numeric. We'll use the data frame function and then we'll pass in each of the vectors. So now if we take a look at our new data frame, we have three numeric variables. So in order to create this composite score, what we wanna do is sum across each of the variables and create a new vector, which is the summed composite variable. So let's store this in a new object, we'll call it items summed. And then here we'll use the row sums function and then we'll pass in our numeric data frame. And then if we take a look at our new object, you'll see that we have the sum scores. Now what you'll often see in the research literature, people will consider this a continuous variable. In particular, they consider it interval level data. And in order to run statistical tests, which we're gonna conduct later, one of the assumptions of these tests is that the data that we're using are interval level data. But here, what these actually are, are summed categorical data. As you remember, one represents strongly disagree, two represents disagree, three represents agree, and four represents strongly agree. So fundamentally, they're not interval level data, they're ordinal data. So again, when you read the research literature, people will sum the scores and then think about these scores as an aggregate measure and then run statistics on them. But that's fundamentally wrong because again, these are just summed count data or summed ordinal data. And when this is done, this is a huge validity concern for any of the inferences that they make from the data analysis. So what we need to do to prepare our data for statistical analyses that we're gonna conduct later is that we can transform these to z-scores. And when we do so, they become interval level data with a specified unit of measure. And the unit of measure is a standard deviation. So let's store this in a new object. We'll call it items z. 
Again, we'll use the score.transform function. And then we'll pass in our item summed object. Now remember, in order to access the z-scores, again, we have to use the dollar sign notation. So let's override this object. And then we'll take the object itself. And then we'll access the new.scores attribute. So now if we take a look at the new object, we have our z-scores. And again, what we could always do if we want is we can round this. So again, let's round the data. We'll overwrite the object once again. We'll use the round function. We'll pass in our items z object and we'll set the digits to two. So now again, if we print this to this console, we have our rounded z-scores. So now we have z-scores representative of how all of the persons responded in aggregate to all of the items. So this is going to be important as we move forward. If you're using some kind of cognitive test in a study, or you're using a survey, or some type of psychological inventory, and you want to run some sort of statistical test on it, which we'll talk about later, you're always going to want to prepare the data by transforming them to z-scores. Now they're on an interval level scale, they're not ordinal data, and we can easily interpret this because it's a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. Again, if you read the research literature, you will commonly see people create a composite summed score variable and then run statistics on those summed scores. And that's a violation of a statistical assumption called interval level data. So it's important that we transform our data in order to properly conduct statistical analyses later, which meet the assumptions of the statistical tests. Otherwise, any inferences that we make from the data will not be valid.